Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, we will quickly examine and infer the mechanism of the jaw musculature of early tetrapods and amphibians. The first rule in understanding muscle movement is that muscles only pull. That is, that muscle fibers can only tighten by decreasing their length. This means that muscles need to run between joints in order to work. The bony fish had two muscles that closed the jaw. The adductor muscles, which lay on the outside of the jaw, and the pterygoideus muscles that are on the inside of the jaw. These two sets of muscles acted like a swing, and when tensed, would snap the jaw closed in the water. Now, once the fish bit down, the food could be swallowed by relaxing the muscles to slowly open the mouth, then tensing the muscles again for a second bite. This works good in the water, but became a problem on land. The early land tetrapods needed an additional muscle to actively open the jaw. Just relaxing the muscles would give an opportunity for the prey to escape. So a new muscle is found in the back of the skull called the depressor mandibula muscle, which runs from the posterior part of the skull to the back of the lower jaw. It is first observed in the fossil megalocephalus. When tensed, this muscle would swing the mouth open. It worked with the adductor and pterygoideus muscles of the mouth so it could quickly open and close. The depressor mandibular muscle is a major innervation for feeding on land. All right, be sure to explain the jaw musculature of early tetrapods and the set of three muscles that work together in opening and closing the jaw. All right, thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.